I think it's going to be one of the last great bull cycles for people to make really, really, really life-changing money. Today, I interview Rand Neuner. I believe that we're very early in the crypto game and that the long-term winners haven't yet been determined. Founder and host of one of the largest channels in crypto. I don't think people understand for the first time ever in history, we are removing any barrier for institutions. As we talk Bitcoin. To not only get into Bitcoin. Top altcoins that he's buying with the biggest growth potential. Actually Actually, I sold half of my Ethereum and put it into Solana the other day. How a bigger crypto crash may be coming. I don't see why this time's going to be different. And best investing advice that he's learned and he's taking into 2024. That is one of the biggest tricks that I've learned. Watch the whole interview. Ran will give his 2024 Solana price expectation. And let's start. I think it's going to be one of the last great bull cycles for people to make really, really, really life-changing money. And I think that, to be honest, I think that the entirety of crypto is actually an anomaly. We've never had an asset class that has been unregulated to an extent, global, right? Where retail has been able to get adoption before institutional traders and, ha and have preferential adoption because it's almost like institutional players couldn't get in. So then the only money that could come could come from the global retail market. And then the most important part of it is that we introduced this thing called a token, which allowed you to capitalize on your value very, 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 very quickly. And luckily for us, the SEC wasn't fast enough to catch up with us and allowed us to make the, these abnormal returns. But I think just to give perspective to people who are here, I don't think there has ever, and probably, I don't want to say ever, but certainly in our lifetime, I don't think there will ever be another asset class that can make so many millionaires and change so many people's lives so quickly. I don't think it has ever happened. I've been around for the internet bubble, I've been around for the for so the dot com in 2000. I was a trader in those days. Uh, I was around for the mobile phone revolution. I was around for social media revolution. I've been around for crypto. I've been around for AI. And I can tell you what we have in crypto is so completely unique. I mean, I have a lot of friends in AI. They haven't been able to realize one cent out of their entire, all the, the, the 10 years of work that they've done. They haven't been able to cash out on one cent. That's what a normal industry is like. We're in crypto and unless you've been in it, you don't understand how lucky we are to be here, but we have this cycle only in my mind to make life-changing money. And it's kind of like, if you don't make life-changing money this cycle, then you're going to kick yourself for the rest of your life and you're going to keep looking for the same opportunity to arise and it's never going to arise and it's going to, it's going to break your heart and break your soul. So just make sure that whatever money you're going to make, try and make it this cycle. I follow you on Twitter. You're always putting out such quality perspective and something you tweeted, I think last week, saying that, does it concern you that everybody's bullish, everybody's made money, everybody's picked the right things because crypto was pumping? And then Monday of this week, um, yes. crypto dipped. So everybody is still bullish, but what's your sort of take in the short term? Is it, are we over uh, hyped? So um, I'm going to try and find, I'm going to try and find uh, that, that tweet because I think it's uh it's pretty here it is it's it's this tweet, um I think it is on your screen I don't know is that yes. the tweet you can you should yes be able to. exactly so what worries me is that everyone's euphoric everyone's rich everything's going up everyone's posting screenshots of their gains everyone's right except Capo, and no one's worried about this, and that's why I think we're due for a correction and when you take that and you take the crazy levels of leverage that we have on altcoins and I'll just show you give an example. Um, here, here it is. That's the leverage on altcoin level. And I'll make it a bit bigger for those. Now, what you can see is that the last time that the leverage got to the heights that we were at was in 2021, not even before Terra Luna and before FTX, did we have this much leverage in the market. Now, leverage only happens when people are feeling so confident that the market will only go up, that they're willing to borrow money to get into the market. And so we've had a leverage flash out, but even after this leverage flash out, as you can see, this is the, the this little part here at the end is the leverage flash out. You can see that even with the leverage flash out, we're still like, there's too much confidence, too much leverage. Let me give you some other warning signs. So um, this is a warning sign for me. People posting pictures of themselves, buying f Ferraris for themselves for Merry fucking Christmas. Like that to me is, is a frothy market. Um, funding rates, ridiculously, ridiculously high. When I take all these things and I put them together, I say, look, I know what happens when people get too euphoric in this market. I've been around for long enough to know what happens when people get euphoric in the market. I want to just quickly just share my screen again. And I'll just show you 
this is all data. You can't argue with data. Like, you know, you can maybe, you can, you can fox the data maybe once or twice and for a short period of time, but you can't do it forever. This is the same leverage chart that I showed you a few minutes ago. Notice that it hits the top green line once over here, once over here, once over here, once over here, and once over here. And in every single time that it's hit that top green line, you've had a correction. It happens every single time. I don't see why this time is going to be different. So yeah, maybe we can delay it until the launch of the ETF and maybe a little bit past that, but you cannot prolong and delay the correction that is almost inevitable. So you can see here, so here is the, here is the, um, here is the previous cycles corrections. I think you guys posted something similar very early this, uh, uh, this week. And it shows you basically that corrections are normal in a bull market. You can still get a 20X and have six corrections of 30% or more. And that's pretty much pretty normal. So that's where my headspace is at. I think we're about to go through the first correction or a correction. I don't know if it's the first correction. It depends when you take the beginning of a cycle. But I think we're definitely getting a correction in this, in, in this bull market. That said, when it comes, it's just an opportunity to buy all the tokens that you thought that you wanted to buy and you missed out on. That's it. That's all it is. That, that's all this correction is about. Into the Bitcoin halving, uh, what's your general Bitcoin thesis? Do you think we'll have hit all-time highs by then? Do you think it'll be 12 months after? This is a very um, unique cycle. So everyone goes back to the Bitcoin halving and we all always talk about the Bitcoin halving. This is a unique cycle because it's the first cycle in the world where we have three things aligning. One, halving, supply shock. Two, demand increase, which can, so it can cause the biggest demand increase in the world. And, I, and, I, and I'll, reference, uh, I'll reference back to that in, in a second. And the last thing is that you're in the beginning of a new global liquidity cycle where global liquidity is starting to increase. So we could be in for an amazing, amazing, amazing super cycle. Let's go back to the, the demand-driven part of it, which is the ETF. So I don't think people understand what a big, uh, what a big era we live in, where for the first time ever in history, we are removing any barrier for institutions to not only get into Bitcoin, but to be able to leverage against their Bitcoin positions. Now, that's what institutions do a lot, is they pledge their shares and their equity and they borrow against it for other for other investments and stuff like that. It's the first time in history that we've removed the barriers and allowed the institutions in. And we've done this on the back of an increasing price of, of Bitcoin. So it's like the, the, the thing that caused the price to increase was the institutions coming in. But because they caused the price to increase, we're in a position now where every fund manager is going to look at Bitcoin and say, this is the best performing asset in the last year. It's done, uh, I don't know, 150, whatever the number is this year, 80%, 90% this year versus the NASDAQ versus the S&P. Now, up until now, they had a defense not, uh, uh, you go play golf with your broker. You say, hey, why didn't you put me in that Bitcoin thing? You say, look, you know, our fund's not really allowed to invest in, in Bitcoin. We don't have a custodian. It's too risky. When there's an ETF and you go play fund with that, uh, go play golf with that same uh, manager, he can't say, look, I can't get in. So what's his excuse for not getting you in? And so it's almost like the success of Bitcoin actually breeds the success of Bitcoin, actually breeds the success of Bitcoin. Now, because you have a limited amount of Bitcoin, it's the only asset that's actually really, 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 truly mathematically finite. That creates a network effect by itself. So there's no other industry in the world where the fundamentals are driven by the people buying the asset, right? In our industry, the more people that buy the asset, the stronger the fundamentals become. And that's what most people don't understand. In every other industry, people buy the equity or the token or whatever it is because the fundamentals are getting strong. In our industry, the more we buy or the more people buy, the stronger the fundamentals actually get because the network becomes stronger, the network effect becomes bigger. And so the asset actually becomes bigger. And that's something that the world has never seen before. And they're about to find out about it anytime around the 10th of December, I think, uh, the 10th of January, I think. How high do you see Bitcoin going top of next cycle? I don't like making price predictions, um, but I think over $200,000. So I, I don't, I, I don't want to make any price predictions, but it's not impossible to me that we can do a 3x on the previous high. Like that, that just sounds really silly. That, like seriously, if we're in this industry and we just can't do a 3x on the previous high, 
then why are we in this industry? Like, I just, I just don't get it. Also, like, if you think of two hundred thousand dollars a coin, you're talking about a four trillion dollar market cap. That only makes it twenty five percent of the market cap of gold. That's not like, you know, like that's that's nothing with an ETF and everything else. That's nothing. So. I hate making price predictions. I'm not going to make a price prediction, but I, I would say that it's not impossible for us to get to $200,000 a coin. And by the way, for the folks at home, that's half the fun of crypto. People talk about this in their living rooms every day. So I appreciate you're in the trenches every day. So I do appreciate you playing ball. Besides Bitcoin, um, what do you have uh, for the high caps? What do you have like the most believe in second? Is it obviously Ethereum or a view more Solana guy or what? Solana, by far Solana. By far, by far, by far, by far Solana. Uh, actually, I sold half of my Ethereum and put it into Solana the other day. Um, so there's a reason for it. The reason is, is is as follows. I believe that we're very early in the crypto game and that the long-term winners haven't yet been determined. So I think like it's like a marathon. And you know, like if you're if you're watching a marathon on TV and you get to the first 10 kilometers, which is 25% of the way, and you have a winner in the first 25% of the way, I don't think that that's too late in the marathon or too early in the, I think that's too early in the marathon to pick your winner. And I think that the winner can easily be the one that's fitter, stronger, has better legs, etc., than the one that's just led the race up until the first 10 kilometers. Now that's where I think we are in this race. Now I look at the fundamentals of Ethereum and I look at the fundamentals of Solana. I use it. And the reason why I said that is I use Ethereum every single day. So what does Ethereum have? It has a very good ecosystem. It has a lot of TVL. It has a lot of VC funding. It has a lot of smart people building on it. I can't take any of that away from Ethereum. And, I, and I'm a big Ethereum um, bull. But I then look at Solana. Ethereum has a whole lot of layer twos. The layer twos don't talk to one another. So if I have a, a DAP on Optimism, it doesn't talk to a DAP on Arbitrum. And now there's ZK and then there's Matic. And it's like these apps don't talk to each other. All they do is they settle onto this main chain called Ethereum, which is slow expensive, slow and expensive. Then I use Solana. Everything happens on the main chain. There's no limit in terms of the number of transactions that you can put through theoretically. I mean, it just, it just keeps scaling. The transactions are very, very, very cheap. I don't have to bridge from the L1 to the L2, then out of the back out of the L2, back to the L1 to go back to another L2. It just all happens in the same fucking chain. Now I look at that and I look at the other one. And then I, I see that people, that developers are starting to think, why should I develop on an L2 if I can just develop on Solana? And so for me, I think it's like a marathon where I think Ethereum will come like second or third in the marathon, maybe even fourth. But I think that the winner of the marathon hasn't been determined yet. And I'm putting a lot of money on the fact that Solana is actually that winner. But again, as I say, you got to keep looking at this through the lens of we're 25% in the race. And I don't remember any marathon in the world where it's been a slam dunk at 25 at, at, at at uh, 10 kilometers into the race where you can pick your winner. So that's kind of where my thinking is. I'm very, very, very overweight Solana. For the Solana ecosystem, do you have like two or three projects or coins just on your radar that, um, or are you just pure base chain? I would say that at any one point in time, 80% of my investment is in the base chain and 20% is, is in the side projects. The reason is, what I found about side projects is that they're always very hot for a very short period of time. So like, for example, last year on Avalanche, you had a, like, for example, Platypus Finance. And, you know, Platypus Finance is worth close to zero. At the time, it was the hottest thing in the world. And I just think that the projects are really, really, really in V1 mode. And I think that a lot of them will get replaced by better technologies, better projects and stuff like that. And so my theory is go to where the bees are where the bees are, bzz, where the, all the investors are. So we, we, I don't know if you can hear that, but we just follow the bees. Um, and then get out and get back into the main chain with your profits every single time and never, ever, ever, ever get attached to a to a, a ecosystem project. We're too early in the race. I mean, you can, you can maybe put some money into the exchanges, but again, you make money, take your investment, put your investment back into Solana. That is one of the biggest tricks that I've learned. You can exit the risk without exiting the market. So you can exit the, the chain projects without actually exiting the whole run-up of the bull. So yes, you'll make slightly less money, but you'll hold on to long-term money. And I just want to remind everyone, 
you certainly need no reminder, but you know, the winner is not the person who makes the most money, but the person who keeps the most money. And a lot, a lot of people that are going to make a lot of money, they're going to be paper millionaires. They're going to land up buying themselves Ferraris on paper, not take the money out. And then at the end of the bull market, they're going to, they're going to land up dying in debt. I call it. So, you know, for me, you can, the, the, the easiest trick is to exit the risk without exiting the market. And that is to exit the projects without exiting the main chain. And that for me is the winner. Well, that is something I've talked about on my channel a ton of time. I mentioned it in the interview I did on your channel. I'll link that down below, by the way. But the value is accruing on these base chains. So no matter what aspect of DeFi or gaming or whatever makes it, we don't know. Huge risk. The value is accruing on these underlying chains um, as the space evolves. Ran, you have, you have such a huge audience on Twitter, on YouTube. You're talking to the newbies or the more intermediates and the experts, the full spectrum, every single day. What's a piece of advice um, you have for crypto investors into 2024? Give you a few and they all come from making a lot of money and losing a lot of money. I mean, I was very public about the fact that I you know, I was a multi, multi, multi millionaire at the last cycle and I, I made some some bad mistakes and I ended up losing a lot of money. Um, I think the, 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 the biggest advice that I can give you is what I've just given you and that is the winner is the person who walks away with the money and not the person who makes the most money in the bull market. I've, I know, and I've made a lot of money. And at one point in the last bull market, I was valued at hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars. And at the end of it, I walked away with a fraction of that. And the reason is because I didn't know how to take profits. So take profits. And if you really can't take profits, take profits into the chain, because the layer one probably has the highest chance of recovery. I think that's the first thing. I think uh, the second thing is um, we are emotional people, and I'm specifically a very emotional person. I swore before this bull market that I'd, I would be very, very, very focused on only the things and only invest in things that I truly believe in. Here we are in the beginning of the bull market and I'm already making stupid bets into meme coins with zero fundamentals because that's just who I am and I'm an emotional person. But what I've done is I've actually put in something to help me. And what I've done is I've created a DGEN irresponsible bucket. It is 10% in my portfolio. It is where I go when I'm doing things that break the rules. And I think that for me, that's been the biggest saving grace because you know what? If I succeed and it becomes a 10X, then that's going to be as big as my entire portfolio. If I fail, I'm only blowing up 10% of my portfolio because of my stupid emotional bets. And you know, the, the stupid emotional bets could actually work, but, but don't blow up your whole portfolio doing it. So just put a little bit of a bucket aside. And then the last thing is um, we're not getting this chance again. Whatever you, whatever dreams and hopes and and whatever else you 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 had because of your crypto career, do it now. There ain't gonna be another cycle like this, and if there is, it'll be a bonus. So if you've thought about getting into crypto full time, if you've thought about maybe going slightly more risky in your portfolio, then do it now at early stages of the cycle, um, and possibly the last cycle. Don't wait until the end of the cycle to do it because you'll get wrecked. And don't wait for the next cycle because that next cycle ain't going to come. There's only one cycle. This is it. Ran, I have two final questions for you before I let you go. And this next one is a little bit of a, a moon question, some moon math maybe. So I want the audience to understand this is just for fun. But if Bitcoin, if Bitcoin reaches that um, ultra 200,000, which is the bull case, um, where could that put Solana, your second biggest bet? Um. 20x from where it is today. So, I mean, 10x takes Solana to where Ethereum is. So, 20x is is probably a, a, a minimum. So, Solana is now at seventy, call it seventy dollars. So, 20x seventy dollars is one thousand four hundred dollars. Not impossible at all. And obviously, then we'd go into bear market. The corrections would happen. We'd level out, and then the you know the oh no, no bear market. No, I mean there will be a bear market, but you know at that point, like you in if Solana does get to fourteen hundred dollars, it becomes the infrastructure for something really, really, really amazing. And then when we do get a correction, I don't think you're going to get a ninety percent correction. Just like in Bitcoin and Ethereum, you never got a ninety percent correction this time around, right? You got like a I think in Bitcoin you went from sixty four, I think you got like a seventy or six. I don't, I don't remember the numbers, but you, you can do the math. So I think that as the technology becomes more and more entrenched and less and less risky, the the drawbacks become much, much, much smaller. And so I don't think we get a 90% correction. We probably only get a 50 or 60% correction. Besides the large caps, and, I, and you asked me some of these questions on the uh, the interview on your channel, but 
what are some lower cap projects, you know, three altcoins, they don't have to be Solana ecosystem that could go to zero tomorrow, but are just, you know, on your radar. So uh, let's not talk coins, but let's actually talk narratives. So um, I'm a big fan of of gaming. Uh, I think gaming is going to be the first uh, mainstream adoption. That, that's a big one. Now, inside gaming, there's so many tokens. I recently invested in Beam. I'm not telling anybody else to do it. I recently invested in, in, Immut in Immutable X. I'm not telling anybody else to do it. Um, I think that trading on decentralized exchanges with high risk and leverage is, is a big narrative. So coins like GMX, GNS, Rollbit, uh, stuff like that. Those are coins that I, I really, really like. Um, what else is there? Like, I think this whole deeper narrative is quite big, but I think it's very much in its early stage. But things like Arweave and Filecoin and all these infrastructure coin projects, I think will be very big. And specifically because the way that I see it is the world is now being driven by AI and AI is driven solely by computing power and the world just like we didn't have enough oil and electricity initially to grow as much as the world wanted to grow in those revolutions i think we have the same problem now with computing power in this revolution the only thing is that we all have spare computing power lying around all the time and i think that anyone that 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 taps into the decentralized physical infrastructure project so akash uh, ars filecoin arweave even internet computer even icp which is like it's the most complicated project. All of those kind of infrastructure projects, we may have no choice but to tap into them because we're in this new AI revolution. Everybody in the Altcoin Daily audience, I want to encourage you, link down below. Go check out Banter, subscribe. You put a great alpha. Man, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, buddy. See you soon.